Welcome to the Job Search Podcast with your host, John Rivero, where we will be interviewing leading industry experts to help you get the job that you want. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Canadian Job Search Academy podcast. This is Connell here, and I've got a very special guest with me today. His name is Sebastian Das. Hi, Sebastian. How are you? Thank you for being on our show. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well, and welcome to Canada. I know you are a fellow new, fellow newcomer to Canada as well in the engineering industry. Is that right? Uh, yep, I'm a mechanical engineer. Yep. Nice. And how has Canada been for you so far? Yeah, so far it's uh, very good. It was a bit of a struggle um, when I came here, and but that paid off, and um, I I got the job, and now now it's going good. Excellent. So, Sebastian, there are a lot of newcomers who listen to our show, and uh, we are always looking out for successful newcomers like yourself to hop onto the show and share your success stories so that others can learn from you as well, and. We've interacted so many times before. I know you're passionate about helping newcomers as well. You're definitely in the right place. And I'm sure that you've got a lot of value to provide others as well. So let's get right into it. And let's hear your story. So why don't we start right from the beginning? So what made you decide to move to Canada at this time, Sebastian? So then after working uh, over for eight years, it was like an old dream to immigrate to a country and to get settled there. And then I again thought of, you know, moving to, uh, moving to a, a country and then I had to decide between Australia and Canada. And I found that uh, the job prospect in Canada is good because when I search for the uh, jobs in my job title, so I got good uh, views that uh, you can get a job there. So that's why I decided to move to Canada. Nice. So I'm just interested to know, uh, what was your expectations of what Canada was going to be like at the time? I, I was that time, you know, the first thing was in mind that it's going to be a struggle because I was been through uh, the immigration process before and I went to Australia as a student and I know that what are the initial struggles are. But uh, that time as a student and uh, this time as a professional, it's completely different because uh, you have a, a bunch of experience, you are in a good position in a good company and when you move to a new country and you start from scratch, it's a completely mm -hmm. different story. So, but right. I was prepared for that. So I uh, did my research well ahead, uh, mm -hmm. moving to Canada. And uh, I just started this uh, in 2017 and it's almost two years. So it took me to, you know, uh, get the PR. And in between right. that time, I have used that uh, period very wisely. And uh, mm -hmm. I have uh, took many resources, whatever I can, whatever was available online. And, uh, you know, I was prepared with the, tools and the strategies before I moved to Canada. That's so that's interesting. So I want to I want to get to those tools and strategies in a second. But uh, before that, I'm curious to know what what did you think your biggest challenges were going to be specifically when you came out here? Yeah, before I moved, my biggest challenge was, uh, though I was a mechanical engineer, that particular field I work as a power engineer, it need a license in Canada. Mm -hmm. So you have to, if you are, want to work in the power generation industry as an operation personnel, you have mm -hmm. to get a license first. And you yeah. have to be assessed which province you are going. Suppose I came to Ontario. So Ontario has an authority that, that's called the TSSA. So I mm -hmm. have to get assessed through the TSSA. And if they assess me, then only I can go for the licensing process. Right, so right. that was my, uh, my uh, first hurdle, what I thought. And... Uh, one more thing, when I search online as a mechanical engineer, you find it that it's a regulated profession and without a license, you cannot work. Right. So I, I just wanted to say to people are listening to me. So I just wanted to say there are many jobs that are available in mechanical engineering and civil and other engineering fields, which don't need a licensing. We don't need a professional engineer. Mm -hmm. Those jobs that need a professional engineer, you can find that thing on the job posting those jobs which need that kind of expertise, they will clearly be mentioned on the job posting. So there are a lot of jobs that are there. You can come and you can uh, start the job because that time you work under APA. So there will be a licensed engineer and you can work under them. That's, that's very good information. I, I think um, in some fields, they call it an apprenticeship role, right? When you're working under somebody else yep. Yep. Who, yep. who has the license. Yep. All right. So yep. while you were still back home in India, 
Uh, yes. How were you preparing for your job search? So when I was in India, two, three things what uh, I have done, uh, because I knew that uh, when I researched online, I knew that uh, the job hiring process and the work culture and everything is completely different from uh, where I was in Canada, uh, where I was in India to Canada is completely different. And many, mm-hmm. uh, for many of us who move here, it's completely different. So first thing I took, I uh, did a pre-arrival program. There is a lot of pre-arrival program that is government funded. Mm-hmm. There are, uh, many organizations are there, they provide it. So I took that pre-arrival program through which I uh, came to know that how to prepare a Canadian style resume, how to prepare a cover letter. And even through that, I did a video introduction. So, you know, yes, uh, how to introduce yourself. So all these things, I, I was well prepared before I came to Canada. And uh, also other thing, um, uh, I let you know, John, uh, in 2018, when even I didn't apply for the uh, this process, uh, for the PR process, I saw your zero to hire that time it was. I saw right. it online and I took uh, one of your course. Uh, I, I can still remember that name. Uh, it was on how the Canadian work culture works. Right. Yeah. So yes, I took yes. that course and I still have the notes on my diary that how the hierarchy <laughs> work here and, you know, and uh, how the Canadian work culture. So knowing these things uh, will be a lot more helpful to you when you when you come to Canada. You mentioned that the hiring process is very different in Canada compared to India. So what were some of the key differences that you can recall? Yeah, the hiring process, I can say that uh, in, in, in a country like India or other Asian countries, uh, if you are technically strong, you know something, uh, you know the job, so you are confident that you are going there and they'll ask the questions and you'll get hired. But here, uh, the hiring process, they mainly see that, you know, whether you are a good fit for the team, even you are technically not that much strong, even that is okay for them, but you should be a good fit for their organization. They, they look that thing first. And one more thing is the reference check. Uh, so I just wanted to know that people, uh, those who haven't moved, just keep a good relationship uh, wherever you are now in the organization, keep a good relationship because here they yeah. do a uh, reference check, you know, after you get the interview, they're going to call back your um, reporting managers, your colleagues, or they may send a mail to know about you. So you've done your preparation in Canada. You obviously did it really well, uh, better than most from what I can hear. And when you landed in Canada, what was your first couple of le- weeks like? Like what did, was it, did you meet your expectations or things were different from what you thought? Yeah. Uh, before I moved here, I had a roadmap with me. I have the clear things on which date, what I'm going to do when I reach in Canada. So what I'm going to do for at least for the next three, four months until I get a job, I had a clear picture in mind. So what I'm going to do, like I, uh, I can say you, I landed on July 28th last year, 2019. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I came here, I knew that on the August 11th, I have to go uh, for the a bridging program. It is called the engineering connection program. I, mm-hmm. This is the only program that is available to engineers and uh, it is to access employment. So I knew that on the 11th of August, I have to go for this uh, info session. And when mm-hmm. I go there, uh, I came to know that I have to uh, go through another exam. That is a CLB Canadian level benchmark examination. They need that uh, report. Second thing I knew that on August 21, I have to go to the TSSA. That was the assessment day. And uh, First few weeks, like, you know, getting your basic things like um, getting your SIM, your bank account, you know, also I, yes. I went for my G1 uh, driving test. So, you know, the first, uh, first month was like everything about the tests, I think. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's great. So you, you had like a full plan laid out for the first couple of weeks, yes. uh, yeah. months almost uh, of what yes. you're going to do. And it's clear now that, you know, why you had such a smooth transition into Canada. And that's, uh, it's really admirable. All right. So we're going to take a quick break. Uh, We've gotten a lot of great info from you on how you prepared. Uh, When we come back, we want to hear more about how you got your first job working at the city of Toronto, which is such an amazing uh, effort and such an amazing feat that you got such a high profile job at such a great company. So we're going to take a short break now. We'll be back right away. If you're looking for a simple way to get more job interviews at the top companies in Canada, then check out how I got three job offers just two weeks after starting my job search. 
and two promotions within three years after that. Even without local experience or exceptional qualifications, I use a secret formula that will get hiring executives to notice your online job application. I break it all down for you at CanadianJobSearchGuide.com. Hey everyone, welcome back. So we are talking to Sebastian Das, a newcomer to Canada who is now a mechanical engineer at the city of Toronto. And uh, Sebastian has been telling us about how he's really thoroughly prepared for his job search in Canada and it rewarded him. He's now a engineer at one of the most prestigious government organizations, I would say in Ontario, the city of Toronto. So uh, for the second half, Sebastian, we want to know, uh, you know, the specifics of how you accomplish such uh, a great, uh, you know, feat like this. So yep. when you got your first job at the city of Toronto, what was your, what was your job strategy like? Where were you spending most of your time? Yeah, uh, what I can say that I always segregated my time, uh, my whole day, I always used to segregate like two to three hours I used to uh, spend on researching on the job posting and matching the resume um, with, with that job posting. And uh, I used job scan, which I came to know from, uh, from your book only. And uh, I used to uh, match the job posting and then uh, when I was, uh, I came initially, I used to apply for a lot of jobs. So then I uh, got through your book and then I reduced my number of uh, job applications. So I clearly applied for those jobs, which was a perfect match for me. And that was the uh, time I was spending for the matching the resume and uh, the job posting. Second thing I used to uh, do is for two hours, I used to do networking on LinkedIn. So nice. I used to connect to people and used to read articles and sending invitations and following up with people. So uh, this is uh, like almost two hours I used to do every day. And uh, two hours I used to do the technical studies uh, according to my uh, my job title, what are the things I may get a question in the interview. So I used to prepare for technical studies. And mm -hmm. the fourth thing I used to do every day, one hour, I say that I used to do the situation based question. I always used to prepare. So that nice. thing is, uh, I can say that, yes, it is completely different. We don't get situation based questions like uh, what you're going to do if you face this situation or what you have done in the past if you face this situation. So I used right. to write down the questions and answers because the answers should be like a telling a story yes. and, and that should be authentic. It's not like that you are telling a story and it's not, it's just wrong. So it has to be authentic. It has to be related with your skills, expertise, and it should be related to your field because, uh, why I'm saying it should be authentic because when you answer a question, you may get follow up questions. So be mm -hmm. prepared for that. So I used to always used to uh, do this preparation every day because I knew that uh, if you want to deliver flawlessly in an interview, we have to practice it. So I used to write down uh, the questions on a notebook and every day I used to practice it. So it's like 40, 50 questions. And this is one thing. And one more thing I did uh, that I went to the recruiting agencies. I went online and saw what are the recruiting agencies uh, for my job. And mm -hmm. I physically went to them and handed over my resume to them. And right. also I had a chat with the recruiters there. So by right. having that chat, I came to know that because they are uh, directly in contact with the companies, the companies, those who are hiring. So yes. they know the, what are the things the company needed in a person. So that thing yes. also helped me. Eight hours, I would say eight or nine hours per day with your yeah, job yeah. search. It was a yes. full-time job for you. Yeah. Uh, you were definitely busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're a family man. So I, I guess, uh, you, you didn't have a lot of time for YouTube and Netflix. It was all about, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I think I, I haven't watched the TV. Uh, I think <laughs> since three, three years or more, I didn't see a TV. Now you currently work at the, the city of Toronto. So, um, how long did it approximately take you from the date that you landed, uh, to getting that job? You obviously had to get your licensing done, uh, yes. before getting a job like that. Right. Or did yes. you take an apprenticeship job before that? Like you had mentioned earlier. When I landed here in July, I got till my get my license. It took almost seven months, mm -hmm. and I got my license finalized on uh, February twenty fourth. And uh, this job I joined on April eighth, so it's, it's about a month. Uh, I got this job, but this is this was not my first uh, interview. So before that, I got four screening calls. So mm -hmm. 
I got a call for the job, but they uh, did not convert it to panel interview. Mm -hmm. And I also got two calls, uh, the screening calls, which converted to a panel interview. But due to the you know the COVID situation started in the February, and those yep. uh, two jobs got cancelled. The interview got cancelled. With your current job, I'm I'm curious to know what was it like? You know the the whole application process, the interview process with the city of Toronto, and how how was your experience different? from you know what it would typically be like in india yeah it was it was completely different because it was a video interview for the first time i never did a video interview actually i yeah. got an uh, i applied it online and i got directly an email that uh, you have been selected for the interview mm -hmm. and the main thing is that uh, i had the license so the licensing thing shows that uh, that you need to know the course and standards what are required in the canada so I just right. want to uh, add one thing to the mechanical engineers. So all the engineers. So whenever you are preparing a resume, just uh, go for the what are the standards, what are the regulations and codes that is required in your job. This is a mm -hmm. specific thing which is completely different from uh, back home. So you right. just go if you want. You can just do a short course and you can just go and read those things. And whenever you are uh, you know preparing your resume, so when you're just uh, writing achievement, I did this. And you can put there that I use these codes, so you know, so they will come to know that this person know the things what is used in Canada, what are the regulations used here. So, so that is the one more thing I just wanted to add. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, back to the process. So I, I got that uh, email uh, stating that there is a panel interview of three people uh, due to COVID nineteen. You have to maintain that distance and everything. Mm -hmm. And then after two three days, I again got a, a mail that it's going to convert it into a video interview because because of the mm -hmm. covid thing and yeah. uh, and i really thank john john is not here but i am really thankful to john that before the day of my video interview i did a mock interview with john and it was like a confidence booster for me really i had, yeah. I, 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 was, uh, I was i was i am very thankful to john and uh, after the uh, interview uh, it was a reference check with my the previous employer yeah so after the reference check i i got the offer John definitely has a way of uh, getting the confidence out of anyone. I can tell yes, you that. Yes, yeah, yes, for sure. sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I still remember he said the super superhero pose to do it, and I did it <laughs> in the uh, workshop before going for the interview. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. That that's yeah. that's the pose I do before uh, starting any webinar as well, or <laughs> going into yeah, any yeah. interview for sure. Yeah. Anytime yeah. I'm going into a uh, into a situation where I need confidence, I I do the superhero pose for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and speaking of the interview, so the interview itself, how yeah. did you find it? Was it uh, challenging? Was it something you were that was different from what you're used to? You need to be prepared. You never know what is going to come in the interview. Means all the questions, I don't say that I knew 100%, but mm -hmm. I have used whatever my old experiences. I just answered them in a confidence. And, <laughs> I, and the best thing I did that uh, the last part of the interview, I think it is, it is for everyone, those who are going for interview, the last part when the I interview asked that if you have any questions for us and that is the one thing uh, I think for my interview I think it was the deciding part I think so so I asked them two questions uh, the first question was uh, regarding a project that was coming up so I did a good research on the company whatever the future projects coming in very good so, so when I when I asked that question they were pretty glad that uh, you did a good research that you are interested in the company then and, and this they told me after the question yes. And yes. the second question I took you for, uh, took from your book, the Canadian Job Search Guide. Yes. And that is that was the unique question, and uh, I'm thankful to you. So right. when I heard this question, they paused for a minute, and uh, <laughs> and uh, he said, "Oh, it's a nice question." So I never heard this. So you know, so I can say that those two questions were, were really. Uh, really maybe a turning point hundred percent right because you know it's just human nature that you know the last thing that's that that is said is the yeah. one that leaves the lasting impression you got to make yeah. a good first impression and you got to make a good yeah. last impression as well yeah. so the and, beginning and, and, you the end. Are, and you have to be different you have to, you could do something different they'll remain uh, that is remaining in their mind exactly right yeah. right so Sebastian, you've been working in canada now at uh, you know one of the most prestigious government organizations in Canada. Uh, what's it been like? What's Canadian work culture been like for you? And how has it been different from what you're accustomed to? Yeah, uh, I believe it's, it's uh, in, uh, different in many aspects. 
the first thing is that if some assignment is given to you if if something is your job responsibility then you are accountable for that so that is the right. first thing and mm -hmm. one more thing is that uh, what i felt is a uh, different is you can't be uh, you know every time you can't ask something to your boss so you if you don't know anything you can't go every time and bother him that show me the way show me the way so they can just right. give you a direction but try to you know those who are new i can say that uh, just try to find out your own way so rather than you know uh, reporting to your boss every time so that is mm -hmm. a different thing and the timing timing is uh, you have to be punctual everywhere and uh, what is your job job timing that's it so you don't have to stay for a long you know to to do more work that is that is one more thing and the uh, probationary period i i i can say that uh, this is the most crucial part so I, I am already in the provisional period so so just take it seriously you know mm -hmm. do your job perfectly and don't you know involve in any of the gossip or something you know so mm -hmm. try to try to maintain uh, try to maintain your uh, pace in the work so i th i think those are the things that are different completely different from back home Right, right. So it's taking more accountability and responsibility yep, yep. Uh, yourself for your uh, for your tasks and your assignment, yep. and that relates to the next point which you mentioned, which is being more self reliant rather than relying on your boss for yep. uh, you yes. know, a lot of things. Yep. And timing, as you mentioned, uh, which I assume means two things: one, you got to be on time for meetings, and uh, the second one is you got to arrive on time and the good news is you have to leave on time as well. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> right. Yes, yes, um, yes. And like you had mentioned the probation period as well, you, you got to stay on the ball. So Sebastian, this has been a fantastic uh, conversation and uh, you know, I, I'm curious to know, you'd mentioned about the book, you'd mentioned about doing some of our courses. I just wanted to ask, how did you feel that the Canadian job search Academy helped you with your journey in Canada so far? Uh, I, I think uh, my journey with the Canadian Job Search Academy started when it was zero to hire back in 2018. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that time I was just applying for my PR. I even uh, didn't file my ITA. And at that time, uh, I came to know about zero to hire online. And uh, as I told before, I took a course on how Canadian uh, work culture uh, over here and I used to listen to the podcast. I think the first podcast I listened was it was the seventh or eighth podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> first yes. I, I I listened to it was it was a little bit of a mentorship program. So I can still remember that. And uh, and then uh, when I came to Canada, uh, I started uh, my engineering connection program and all my licensing things. Then I contacted you after when I when I finished my first exam. So I mm -hmm. I, I contacted uh, you. And uh, that time you advised me that you cannot apply for a job now because you don't have the license, but you can build your network. So that was, I think, the best advice I took from you. And mm -hmm. I, I, I took your course, how to build your LinkedIn profile and networking. So, right. so I took that course and uh, that was a complete change to my LinkedIn profile. And also uh, how I connect to people, it actually increased in a month. Actually, I was connecting to like 15 to 20 people. It's mm -hmm. not only 15 people, they were all related to my field. That is, that is, the, that is the most important part. And um, one thing I can say that in between that also, I have, uh, there were three people who forwarded my resume to their hiring manager. But the unfortunate situation because of the COVID, um, uh, it got disturbed. But, but I'm saying that that was working, that networking thing, what the course I took and how I approached to people. And that was completely working. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. the next thing, next best thing was the Canadian Job Search Guide. I can, I just really recommend that guide to everyone, those who are planning move to Canada or they are already here because it gives you a complete picture how the Canadian job market works. I think, I think, I think that is the, I can recommend 100%. It's affordable. Everyone can buy it. So just mm -hmm. go for that book. Uh, that book is, uh, is, a, is a very good guide for you. It will show you the path. What are the tools you need to use in your job search process? So I think the 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 whole thing uh, with the Canadian Job Search Academy is is, is fabulous. Thank you very much, uh, Sebastian. That was uh, you know it was really great to hear that. You know we we do take a lot of effort. We are motivated to help other newcomers as well. And uh, you know when when I see folks like you, newcomers like yourself, that uh, 
are seeing the kind of results that we we hope to see in others, uh, it really brings us a lot of joy. So so thank you very much for that. Yes, um, and so, I, w- one more thing I want to add that uh, to people those who are listening, and whenever you are taking a course from Cornell or John, and uh, whenever you are in trouble, you contact them; they will really help you out. So <laughs> so they are there to help you. So that is a, that is a good thing that if they immediately respond to you, and uh, they try to help you out. So that is a very good thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sebastian. So as we wrap up, uh, I, I wanted to ask you, what is the one message that you would have to other newcomers who are coming to Canada, both personally as well as professionally? So you have to be, uh, one thing I can say that the period you are in back home, just take that time seriously, you know, rather than you got the a uh, visa rather than parting, I think you should uh, take that time very seriously because when you arrive in Canada, the struggle starts from the day one. So, uh, so there is a, there is a say. So it's it's good to you know sweat in peace rather to you know bleed in war. So so the time utilize it uh, good in India. Do a good research and take the resources which are available, just like the pre-arrival programs or any other courses that are available with the. Uh, online courses you can take it so so use that time very wisely and one thing before coming over here uh, be prepared with a mindset that you know be open that if you are uh, going for the job title uh, I can say that you can may start from the entry level so you never know in which area you get the job so always be prepared be open to because this is a this is a country and uh, this is works completely differently from uh, where you came from. So you have to be very open-minded. So that's one thing I can say. Could you repeat that uh, phrase you mentioned? Something about blood and sweat? That's yeah, a good one. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a phrase that uh, it is better to sweat in peace. Because, uh, you know, when you practice good, you'll be good in the war. So you're less bleed in the war. So, you know, so okay. you're more prepared. So you're going to less bleed in the war. So... <laughs> Yeah. I'm definitely going to use that in my next webinar for sure. <laughs> okay, okay. And I'm going to put in there, Sebastian says. <laughs> so Sebastian, what's, what's next for you in Canada? So right now I'm going with my job. It's good. Everything is going good. And um, one thing that actually I started, I just want to mention here. I, I used to write on Quora and I used to uh, give answers to people on uh, uh, Facebook, when somebody asks me whether it is a newcomer, whether it is a person who is, you know, trying to immigrate to Canada. So I have a good knowledge of, you know, how to, how I did this, uh, uh, the permanent residency process. So I started a blog, my own blog site. It's uh, called canadify.com, where I'm writing the post with regards to what you need to do, you know, before coming to Canada, what you need to do once you reach in Canada, and how you... Uh, check your eligibility for the immigration process, how you file your access entry. So, so these kinds of posts I'm uh, writing uh, down so that, you know, people can, this is a free uh, blog site, so people can go there and uh, they can uh, uh, read everything and they can get benefited. And uh, the main reason I did that, I paid a lot of money to the consultancies to know all this process. Now I know everything, so I just wanted to uh, give it back to people. So those who are into the process or in between the process or already in Canada. So that is why I started this blog site, uh, keeping that in mind. We're definitely going to include the the link to that blog site uh, in the show notes below. So folks, if you're listening, you can just scroll down and uh, get a link to the blog site. And I, I think there's a lot of value in what you do, uh, Sebastian, because, you know, there's the, the information required uh, in order to know how to get the process started and get things done is, is a whole sea of conflicting information and uh, it can get pretty complicated, as you said, yep. right? So it's good to know that you've actually simplified it in your blog and uh, I'm sure a lot of people are definitely going to benefit from it. All right, folks. So that's it. That brings us to the end of the show. Sebastian, thank you very much. And to you and your family, a big welcome to Canada, and I'm sure you're going to have the life that you always dreamed of out here. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Connell, and also say my thanks to John. Uh, in my difficult period in Canada, you were a real help. So I have uh, many more to say, but I can just say that thank you. You're very much welcome, uh, Sebastian. All right, folks, that's a wrap. So we will catch you at the next episode. Thanks. Bye bye.